Josh Singer, my co-writer, and I on this film Spotlight, why we're here. Um, we, we were doing a lot of research, sort of preliminary research on this, and we sat down with this guy, Clay Shirky. I don't know if you ever heard anything by Clay, who's the, kind of was one of the first guys out on the new media frontier, and um, had some interesting thoughts, and sort of circled back after he saw where it was heading, which is like you have, I think there's a little bit of a sort of disconnect in the general public of understanding of new media. There's so much more information that we're all better off, and there are citizen journalists, and all this sort of aggregate, but the question is, where is it coming from? So you have legacy journalism, which is greatly diminished. You know, year by year, it gets worse and worse, right? What and, is and, that? Uh, newspapers, oh, real, okay. real solid, high-level sure. investigative journalism, and like, so who's supplying the news anymore, right? So I think that's what you're talking about with ag aggregation, right? So, no, what's the word? Credentials. Credentials. <laughs> Accreditation. I made that up. Um, but you can use that if you'd like. Um, and, you know, I think that's something we were sort of, when we were dealing with the film, we're like, yeah, I think there's a real, and now talking with people as we're screening the movie, we realize that people are like, well, there's more information than ever, but the question is, how valid is it? You know, how, has it been, has it been edited? Has it been checked? Is when you did the research on Spotlight, what did you come across that, that surprised you? Uh, that was one thing. And, and, and by uh, that... And we should say, if people haven't seen it, that it's about the Catholic Church's attempts to cover up uh, yeah, the movie, pedophilia. Right. Well, the movie deals priests. with the 2001... It's pr pr predominantly, it deals with the 2001 investigation into the Catholic Church by the Boston Globe Spotlight team for a person investigative unit. So in 2001, newspapers were at the height of their powers. It was before the kind of crash of 2000, 2005, 2006. So we don't really deal with where we are now. We just sort of show by example when, when mm. things worked and, and this investigation worked extremely well. Um, but so we didn't have to really editorialize in that way. You know, we didn't have to comment on that. We just said, we'll show by example what it is and hope the discussion follows afterwards. People would say, where are we now? Which it's, it's pretty dire, the journalism industry. Well, I had to know. That's why he had the reaction. Because he knew there were others. I think that's the bigger story. But the numbers clearly indicate that there were senior clergy involved. That's all they do, indicate. Are you telling me that, that if we run a story with 50 pedophile priests in Boston... Mike, we'll get into the same cat fight you got into on Porter, which made a lot of noise, but changed things not one bit. I mean, how much did you think about what audiences would and would not want to see about the underlying behavior here? I, I don't think we really considered it. It was more just our avenue into the movie. It was through the journalists and through their experiences. So we were seeing what they were seeing. And, and the victims or survivors, I should say, the survivors they were sitting with at this point had come forward, you know, 20, 30 years later. So we're meeting um, men, particularly in their 30s and 40s, who were now coming forth with their stories. And so um, there are a couple scenes where we see children, but not we never see the act. So it really wasn't about that. It wasn't relative to the story or the, or the reporter's experience. So, um, I, you know, I think, I think, and I agree with Lenny, who I think is a great director and a really smart guy. It's sort of, you know, I think, I think we probably all agree here. You just got to forget about that stuff. You always have an audience in mind, but you're just going going after the story, you know. How, mu how much did you feel free to move away from the actual facts of what happened? Um, not that much, actually. We really tried to stay as close to, as we could to, what, to, the, to the events. We just found them too compelling. <laughs> we felt like we didn't need to invent uh, that they were there. It was more make, choosing what we could not include, because it was a six-month investigation. We had two hours to tell the story. So, uh, and I just then, you know, spending so much time with reporters and, and a movie about authenticity, you know, which is what it is, at the end of the day, we felt like we could then not be inauthentic. <laughs> we actually had a moment where halfway through this investigation, spoiler alert, 9-11 uh, happens. And as you know, a couple of planes left Logan, so everyone in the Globe team was taken off that investigation, which they were very close at that point to almost cracking it and put on put on the 9-11 story, and um, uh, when we were screening it early on, some people would, would say, like, wow, that's really, having that moment really takes me out of the movie. Maybe you should remove it. I'm like, how do you remove 9-11? <laughs> <laughs>
I feel like I did it. I did it. (laughs) Because I nailed it. Um, That's a great feel. No, because it's a process, right? And it's it's what your first question was about. What do we regret? Hopefully we don't regret that much. I think like that's what Amy's movie is so great about, right? It's like all the mistakes we made and the cumulative and the sloppiness of it. That's what I love about your movie, the sloppiness of it and in so many ways. And I feel like that's, it's what makes, it's what gets us to where we're going. And I think better than regretting, if you can kind of steal yourself for it and like accept it and, and work through it, like you were saying, jump back into the next project, it's just the best way to get where we're going. It's a lot less painful. 